Hi, my name is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works. Today, we're going to show you how to use Facebook to authenticate into your Power Apps portals. So, stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. In a previous webinar, we showed you how to create a LinkedIn connection. And in this webinar, we're going to show you how to create a Facebook connection into your Power Apps portals. So, we're going to get you as far as uh, actually seeing that login, the one that looks like this. Let me kind of hop over to my share real quick. We're going to uh, see this Facebook login. I'm going to refresh and go over to sign in. And we're going to see this Facebook login uh, today. That's our goal today. And then in our future webinar, we're going to see how do we actually tie that user who authenticated into a certain role that can see certain pages. So that will be in a future webinar beyond this one. So let's get in, into actually how do we get that, that Facebook authentication for your webinar or for your uh, 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 portal. So back over here, let me go back over to my website now. And I'm going to go to this portal, which we get one portal per environment. I'll go over here to uh, the, my Brianville one, go to settings, and then click site settings. Now we'll see there's two site settings for Facebook. Now these are our dead apps in mind. So we'll go ahead and, and select these two guys and wipe them out and hit the save button. And you'll see as soon as I do that, that the provider goes away. So if I go back here again, and refresh that, that my Facebook is actually going to go away as soon as I do that. Now, once you change those settings, it might take a few seconds to kind of refresh as many as 30 seconds the first time as it kind of recaches things and does its thing behind the scenes. So I'll go back over here again and check out while we're doing for that this, this uh, app secret right here. Okay, and I'll save in the bottom right. So these are the two settings we're going to have to change to make this work for us. Now you'll also see once we do this that the users are going to go into a contacts down here into contacts, and we'll show that kind of that workflow uh, all the way through, uh, and then all the way just just shy of the actual user assignment. So back over here again, one last time. I hit the refresh, and Facebook is now gone. So. How do we actually create that button? Well, the first step is to go over to developers.facebook.com, register for an account, and then under My Apps, I'm going to create a brand new application so you can see from start to finish. First question it's going to ask is, well, what do you want this app to do? Well, I just really want the person's uh, public profile and their email address. Now, you could ask for more. However, the more you ask for, the more it's going to trigger privacy alerts with Facebook. And it's going to require some, some intervention. Maybe it may slow down your app development. So definitely start with a basic one, which does not require any authentication from Facebook. And then as time goes on, you can add more and just know it's going to, be, it's going to take some time for, for Facebook to review uh, your app if you do decide to do that. So I'll just going to stick with just, I want, I want logins only. Hit next. Uh, next, it wants to give me a name. So I'll just call this Facebook login for BKville. I'll give it an admin login. I can have to give some kind of purpose. So I'll give us a login for BKville citizens. Okay. And uh, you can see we look, we look pretty good there. Uh, it's actually going to give me an issue here. I think it's got, it won't let me hit the create button, probably because I've got a too long of a name. There we go. I'm not sure why it's not letting me hit the create button here. Let me get rid of this so you all can see it as well. Okay. Oh, I see the problem. I didn't hit the uh, the business option up top there. So I'm going to point this over to my Pragmatic Works one. I, I've done this 100 times now, and I'm, I'm skipping steps by accident now. All right. So I'm going to point to that. Hit the create button. Uh, then it needs a few more things. Looks like uh, uh, looks like my Facebook uh, face is too long. Let me go ahead and just call login for BKville. It's funny they have some interesting rules at Facebook sometimes. And I need to prove that I am no, not a robot. And where is the crosswalk? There we go. This makes an interesting webinar always. There we go. And submit. Okay, with that now done, we are ready to go ahead and configure this for a few more things. This is actually, this process took me a little bit over time of the weekend to kind of figure out. Uh, it's very picky, not on the uh, Power Apps portal side, but on the Facebook side. And the setting it's really picky with is on the redirect URL, which we'll see in just a moment here. So a few things you may want to go ahead and configure. Uh, one that they're kind of picky about is making sure you can't go live until you have a privacy piece. Let me go ahead and just, oops, let me go ahead and point to uh, my URL. I'm just going to cheat and just copy and paste. Now you should actually point to a real URL, of course. I'm just going to cheat and pop in my base URL. And then I'll hit say, and I'll say it's supporting my business. All right, good enough. 
So, of course, there's a lot more we can do inside this to really make it a production-ready one. Uh, your users are going to see this, right? So you don't want to point to your root URL. You don't want to not have a log, uh, a, um, an icon. You want to keep make it look very, very clean. In my case, I'm just, just trying to show you how to do the basics here. Once we have that, we go over to Facebook Login and go to Settings. So this is where we need to say, what is the URL that somebody is going to uh, uh, be redirected to after they type in the URL after they actually hit the login button. So make sure these are turned on. These are turned on by default, so you should be good. And then you also want to make sure that uh, I, I'm not going to make my users re-authenticate uh, in Facebook after they, you know, they're already logged in, fine, good enough for me. So then I'll go ahead and paste in my, my portal URL, do forward slash sign in dash Facebook. So this was a tricky one to find. Uh, it was buried deep in some documents for Dynamics portals. Uh, at first, it, well, I would try the root URL, try all sorts of different combinations. And if we don't type this in right, it's going to give you an error that states hey, uh, the URL is not valid. And it gives you a very obscure error at first. So make sure that this is exactly like you see here, uh, but with your portal name, not my portal name. My, my portal name is that BKVille. Uh, pop in your own URL and then just change that. To make sure it's forward slash sign in Facebook and make sure it's HTTPS. Once you do that, hit the tab and that should now be ready to roll. My last step is I'm going to turn, I'm gonna, well, first of all, I need to save this. Go ahead and save that, and then go ahead and turn this live so external users can now do this. Now, notice it's actually saying, hey, make sure you're, 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 your privacy stuff's all taken care of and all that. If you don't have the privacy stuff, it won't let you go to the next step. All right, so Facebook is now done. It was that simple. Now, that, that those little tiny steps there uh, could take you a little while to kind of debug and figure out what the problem is. But now that we've done that, our key one is to go ahead and refresh. Oh, go ahead and, I can't refresh that. I need to get the actual uh, app key out. So to get the app key out, I need to go to settings, or sorry, app profile. App profile right here on the top right. Once you have app profile, you'll see your app right here. There's my app ID right there, and there's my app secret next to it. So let's go ahead and get the first one in. Go to site settings, go to your app ID, and paste in that value. And again, saves on the bottom right, kind of an obscure place to put to hide it, but it is there. And then you need your secret key. So don't use mine because mine will be changed after this webinar. And uh, you'll get a silly error if you try to do that. I'll say app, app name not found or something like that. So make sure you pick, do build your own and don't base it on mine. I know people try every single time I do webinars like this uh, and show that. They always uh, try nonetheless. So uh, let's go ahead and put the app secret in. Okay, paste in that your that, that uh, app secret. Again, hit save. Now, once you do that, I'm going to go back to this uh, my incognito window, and I'm going to hit the, the sign in button. And it might take a f uh, 30, 40 seconds, maybe the first time you refresh the screen after making this change to come up. But once it comes up, you'll see that new icon right here. So what's going to happen once we do this? I'm going to hit the sign in button. And then once it signs in, it's going to create a new contact inside of the CDS, Common Data Services. So there's my Facebook account. Now, in my case, when I hit Facebook icon, it's going to say, hey, do you, do you want to continue this as Brian? And I, I'm granting rights to my, my picture and my email address. Fine and dandy. I'll go ahead and hit continue as Brian. Now it's authenticating in. Now this is my, my tester account right now. So uh, this is Brian at brian at my fake email address.com. Once it comes back around, I'll just go ahead and put some information. It looks obviously fake, so we'll be able to find this easier here. I'll put tester account, and I can keep on going here, put my public profile, my language, and all these kind of things, and hit update. Now watch the top right. There's my test account, and I can easily hop back over to profile. So I can keep my tester account. So now when I go back over to site settings, and I go into my contacts, we don't see it. So where did it go? Well, this is the mistake I always make inside of Dynamics and inside of CDS in general. It's if I change this from active contacts to, uh, sorry, to active, sorry, my contacts to active contacts, this contact uh, uh, tester account has not been assigned yet. So that's why it doesn't show up in that first one. So if I hit assign and hit OK, it's going to be assigned to me now. And now I'm going to see that back in that, that generic contacts, my active accounts, 
we'll see tester account right there. Not really required that you do that by any means, but that's just, that's just assigning me as a salesperson or the, the representative for that. So what we showed you here is how do we go from a sign-in inside of Facebook all the way over to seeing that contact here inside of our, uh, our site settings. In our future webinar, we're gonna go into the entity permissions and make sure that how do we get you know, Brian access to that. And also how do we look at uh, restricting the web page access as well and granting certain users right to that page. So that'll be our next webinar, our next, our, our next video uh, on this uh, later this week. But want to make sure we show all the login providers. We have one more to go and that's LinkedIn, li not LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. And then we'll show these uh, settings you're seeing right here as well. Hope you enjoyed the session. Now we have lots of training uh, at pragmaticworks.com. We have a free session on how to learn uh, Power Apps. That is our app in a day. You'll see that description in the comments that are in the, in the uh, uh, extended description down below. And we love building apps for customers as well. You can get us at, hit us up at pragmaticworks.com or my email address is bnight at pragmaticworks.com in case you want to send us an email about building an app for you. Hey, thanks for watching this video today and stay tuned to our next video that we have a little bit later this week on how do we actually assign that contact rights to view or not view certain pages. Have a great day and thanks again for watching this webinar.